Hey, this is Tim Olson with Edgeline Studios, and for the past few months, I've been shooting on the Blackmagic Cinema Camera, learning the ins and outs. So I thought I'd make a quick little video showing you the things I like, don't like, and the things I just think are really cool about the camera. So let's take a look. So without a doubt, one of the biggest reasons why this camera is so popular is its ability to shoot 2.5K resolution in a raw 12-bit DNG format. And it records directly to an SSD as opposed to a card. So on a solid state drive, you can record for about 30 minutes on a 240 gigabyte drive. And so in post, you're going to get your 13 stops of dynamic range. So what that means is it's going to create what's kind of like a flip book of images at 24 frames per second or all the way up to 30 frames per second. So you're able to convert those DNGs to any codec, such as a ProRes file, so it's ready for your Final Cut edit. It does not shoot any frame rate higher than 30 frames per second, uh, which is unfortunate. That's another downfall of the camera, is I really wish it was able to shoot, even in a lower resolution, something like 60 frames per second. There's two different models of the 2.5K version of the Blackmagic Cinema Camera. There's an EF mount version and a Micro Four Thirds mount version. So the sensor inside is slightly smaller than a Micro Four Thirds sensor, but slightly larger than an S16 sensor. So the Micro Four Thirds mount is more appropriate for the sensor, but it is a passive mount. So what that means is if you have any glass that has an electronic iris control, you're gonna be out of luck. So the form factor on this camera is a little strange and a little unique. It's got a good weight to it, so if you have to do run and gun situations, yes, you can certainly do it. But remember, this is a cinema camera. You're better off putting it on something like a shoulder rig where you have more control over it, or even a tripod. It does have mounting screws on top for other accessories, but it's not really meant to use. Because of its form factor, it's hard to grip. So you're definitely gonna want yourself a shoulder rig, or a tripod. One of the unfortunate drawbacks of this camera, and it really is unfortunate because I love the five inch monitor that's on the back of this thing, is that there's so much glare on this monitor. I mean, you could use it as a mirror to kind of check your looks, but it's really unfortunate. Anytime you're outside, you're gonna need the sun hood that they supply you, which does kind of, it, it minimalizes the glare, but it's still there and it's still very prevalent. Uh, so you're going to need something like an EVF in order to uh, check your focus or anything or uh, really, really pay attention to your, to your frame. So if you're unable to have the EVF and you still want to film outside, a feature that the camera has that is actually really cool is it's got a focus peaking button that's going to turn on the focus peaking feature which will show you the hard edges of anything that's in focus. I definitely recommend using it anytime you're filming outside. Whether you're shooting in RAW or a 1080 ProRes, the camera comes with DaVinci Resolve, a software that's about $1,000 included into the actual price. That's pretty remarkable, pretty amazing. You'll be able to take your DNG files, bring them into DaVinci Resolve, and output as a ProRes, edit, and then link back to them later to, again, adjust your RAW files. It's pretty amazing that it comes with it. Uh, definitely, if you're shooting in a log format with your ProRes, bring it into DaVinci, It'll give you a full grading scale, full color. It's going to be beautiful, amazing.
So the camera does have some internal options when it comes to audio. It does allow you to plug audio directly into the camera, but with that said, if you're serious about audio, if you want good audio, get yourself an external recorder. But if you must plug directly into the camera, there certainly are some options in here in the settings, in the menu. There's a microphone input, channel one and two control, a line, mic, as well as speaker volume. There's even a reference mic up here that's always recording an audio track for you, but I wouldn't rely on that for your actual audio. It's only reference. It's located right by the fan, so you're guaranteed to hear some noise. On the side of the camera, we've got some inputs. We've got a 12 to 30 volt input, which allows you to charge the actual camera itself as there's no battery to pull out and replace in it. So you have to charge the actual unit. It lasts for about 90 minutes when you have the camera on completely, roughly 90 minutes when I say that, but you certainly can plug in any external source. I have these Tachyon batteries that I use as a brick as a counterweight on my shoulder rig but I'm able to plug in with a cable that plugs right into the battery itself and the other end simply into the camera. And I've got myself some extra time on the Blackmagic. Other features on the camera is a Thunderbolt jack, an SDI out, as well as two quarter inch for audio, a headphone jack, and a link control. I never used to be a guy that shot a lot of time lapses. I just never had the time. But ever since they added that to the firmware, it's actually become one of my favorite features. You can record anywhere from every two frames to every 10 minutes. I've done every 10 seconds, let it sit for a couple hours, and then when I come back to it, hit play, I can instantly watch back the time lapse, record it to a ProRes, DNX HD, or even RAW. So the great part about shooting ProRes in this camera is you can either shoot in a video mode or a flat log mode, film mode as they call it, which gives you the full dynamic range of the camera. It gives you those 13 stops of dynamic range. Coming from someone who shot a lot of DSLR work, having to go through the endless amounts of converting that footage to ProRes, it's nice just to come straight off the camera, throw that ProRes in my edit, and be able to work straight away from it. So the menu system is fairly easy to navigate around in. It comes with camera settings, audio settings, record settings, and display settings. The camera settings are gonna allow you to change things like the camera ID, date and time, as well as other things that will adjust your picture like ISO, white balance, and shutter angle. Now, the ISOs that it comes installed with in the firmware is 200, 400, 800, and 1600, with 800 being the native ASA. So for just under three grand, this is a pretty amazing camera. The fact that you can shoot 2.5K RAW and it comes with a full copy of DaVinci Resolve is just nuts, absolutely insane. It is, it really is. So if you're someone who, because of the price point, doesn't want to step up to something like a Red Scarlet, or you're someone that wants to take the next step up from a DSLR, or pair it with your DSLR that now shoots RAW, this is the perfect camera for you. It's a really fun, uh, interesting camera. They have another camera coming out that's a 4K model with an S35 sensor, and they also have a pocket cinema camera version coming out that shoots 1080 RAW. So any one of those, if those are in your price point, go after it. I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing what you get in this small little package. So 
Thanks guys for watching my review, and if you'd like to see more, visit edgelinestudios.com. Thanks for watching.